Hey, how you doing? Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons. Hope you're well. And this is bass tip number two. Before I tell you this week's bass tip, I just want to let you know that the track that you just listened to, where I'm playing along, um, the backing track that I used for that is downloadable free. All you have to do is hit the link below this video if you're watching it on YouTube, and that'll take you straight through to the page, and you'll be able to download it underneath the video. If you're watching it on my website, the link is right underneath this video, okay? So, base tip week number two. What I want to talk about this week is how and why you should be constantly transcribing all the time. When you're in the car, when you're listening to the radio, you don't have to have your bass. In fact, it's a great exercise if you haven't got your bass. When I'm driving along in the car, I you know, put the radio on, and if a tune's playing, I'm either trying to work out the bass line, so what I do is I imagine the root note, say if the root note was C, okay, so I'd imagine the root note to be C, and then I try and work out the intervals listening to the radio, I'm like, okay, so I think that's a, I think that's going up to the fourth, and then down to the second, and then up to the fifth, constantly I'm listening to the radio and I'm trying to work out the bass line without my bass. Now there's a technique for this, we'll get, get to it in a second. And then other, the other thing is, is listening to the melody of the song as well, in the radio, in the car, when you're driving to work or whatever. Listen to the melody of the song and try and work out how you'd play that on bass without using your bass. So try and make a mental note of it when you're driving, okay, make a mental note, think okay, I think it's this, I think it's that movement. And then when you get home, try it out on your bass. Now to start off using this technique, you really need to, first of all, be really comfortable with the C, well, a major scale. We're gonna use C major scale for this tutorial, but you really need to be comfortable with the what the first position, I would say, you know, most people use when they're learning a major scale, which is, we'll just go through it now, it's finger two, finger four, remember this is a C major scale, so we've got the, the second finger on the C on the E string, the fourth finger on the D, then finger one on the E, finger two on the F, finger four on the G, finger one on the A, finger three on the B, and finger four on the octave on the C. Now, I'm not thinking the notes particularly when I'm playing it, I'm just thinking, really, I'm just thinking root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, an octave. And the numbers, I've always got numbers assigned to my fingers, would be one, two, I mean two, four, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. And because I've always got my hand in this position, I can just think two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. And I've got a good idea of my scale by using that little number system there. Back to what we were talking about. So, what you want to do is really, really ingrain this major scale pattern in your, in your, your brain, really, or, you know, and in your hands. And then I want you to listen or take really simple melodies with your bass in your hand. So this is almost pre, you know, before you go in the car and try and transcribe tunes and listen to the radio and get them down on your bass without actually having your bass there. Before that, get your bass, okay, play the C major scale up and down a few times, and then take really simple songs like um, Farah Jaka, for instance. ba dee da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 di da 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 do da da do da. Now I've never played that before, but I I I know the intervals. And know the intervals within that C major scale or any major scale, it's within that pattern. Now I know them intervals because what I started to do years ago is relate the intervals to famous songs. 
So, for instance, if I'm going up a ba ba, if the beginning of fair is like a ba di ba da, if I thought, okay, that's my root note, ba ba, what what note's that? Ba ba. Well, that's that's a a major second. Remember, we're in the the major scale shape here, and it's the same as happy birthday, happy birthday, ba 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 ba. So every time I hear that ba ba, I relate that to happy birthday, ba 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 bo, ba da. Okay. Now the next note in the C in the C major scale or any major scale is the major third. And again, I've got a famous song that I relate to ba ba, and it's Oh When the Saints. Oh when. Saints, oh when, ba da. So it's root major third, ba da. Now you don't have to use the songs that I use. You can find your own songs. But what I'm saying is that you should have songs that help you remember the intervals when you're playing them. Okay, so ba ba. Oh when the saints, oh when the saints, oh when the saints come marching in. Now the next one, booty, is a real easy one. Booba, it's the fourth, so one, two, three, four. It's amazing grace. So it's that first amazing grace. So remember that one. Buddha. The next one is my favourite one. Buddha. It's the perfect fifth. Buddha. And this is Superman. Ba -ba -da. that first ba -ba -da. now what you'll find is when you're listening to songs on the radio that the melodies often start with either the root the major third or the fifth Buddha. so you'll be able to know you'll be able to recognize that that's a fifth because the band will be going but the singer will be ba -dee -dee -da -da. for instance so she's ba Come on, that that major fifth. Ba -dee -dee -da 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 -da. Ba -dee -dee and then just take this concept and run with it. So you want to be able to put any interval to a famous song. So Jaws, for instance, will be the minor second. Yeah. And then, uh, what have we not done? Uh, the major six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now the end is near. My Way by Frank Sinatra. Boo -ah. The major seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boo -ah. And would be um, Take On Me. Take On Me by Aha. Do you know that song? Take On Me. Boo -ah. And then the octave, I just think of somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. Booah. Now, so you need to sit down, write these down, you know. So you've got a song for every interval within the major scale. And then grab, well, grab your bass and try and work out some really simple tunes that you know without almost, you know, without going. You know, without searching around for the notes, put your hand in that position, okay? Put your second finger on that root, and then just sing the song in your head, okay? So, um, booba. If I was doing Superman, for instance, I would sit, I would put my finger on that on the uh, the C with my second finger on the C, and I would sing. Sorry about my singing, by the way. I should apologise about that. I should have put a warning at the beginning of this video. By the way, Scott's singing. You know, be careful. Wear are earplugs? Anyway, so we put the second finger on the, the C, which is the root of the major scale, and we sing ba ba da. We know that's a fifth now. Boo boo ba, boo do da, boo ba, so ba. So if I think of the root, boo -a. and now the end is near. It's the major six. So boo boo da, boo da. 
Now this takes a long time. Even when I'm doing it in the car, I'll be listening to a tune. I do this all the time. I'll be really, really listening. I'll think of my major scale and I'll be thinking, okay, that's finger two to finger four, maybe down to finger one, you know, and I'll get home. Sometimes it's wrong, you know, sometimes, sometimes I've messed up. But more often than not, because I've been doing it so long, I get it right. And how, this translates, basically, this is what it all means. When you're in a live situation and you hear people playing something, you'll instantly recognise what that is in relation to your root note, what you're playing, and it means you can go with it. It means you actually understand what they're doing and it's not a guessing game, you know. Another great exercise um, for this thing is just, you know, and this used to annoy and does annoy my wife to bits. It used to annoy my parents as well. I'll just sit there watching TV and work out theme tunes. When you hear a theme tune to a song on the TV, you know, I'm like, you know, try and get it down, you know. I'm sure you've heard that one before. I used to do that all the time. And again, it's just that, that, that interval recognition thing that you're looking for. Then you can get this concept and use it within your soloing. For instance, when I solo, I can generally sing what I'm playing. So when you get this into your playing and practice it for a while, because it does take a while, you know, it's not something that you can, it's not like a lick you can do, you know, this is, I'm talking about deep understanding of music and, and actually ingraining these sounds in your ears and be able to recognise them on the fly. Now when you do that, that's when music starts to become an actual language. And that's really what we're all aiming for, you know, so we're not thinking about notes and scales, we want it to be a language. But to get there, we need to be able to, you know, we need to understand our grammar, the scales, you know, and understand groove and, and how to apply melody to that and, and, you know, understand interval recognition, be able to recognise them, understand harmony, be able to hear it and pick up how we will be able to play that on the bass. When we can do that, when we get in live situations, our interaction literally just like leapfrogs forward, you know, that's for me what separates players, you know, this deep understanding and recognition of intervals and music to, to the guys that really haven't got it. So I really want you to work on this real hard, you know, on your, on, on your way to work on a morning in the car or, you know, riding your bike or whatever. Make sure you've got that iPod on and, you know, be thinking all the time about intervals. What the, what's the bass line doing? How is he playing that, you know? And be able to, when you get home, you want to be able to pick up your instrument and play that bass line without being able, you know, without having to sit there and trying to work it out. It could be in the wrong key, you know, but you'll have the actual shape down within the major scale. Hopefully you've enjoyed this small bass tip I wanted to give you. If you have, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm putting out new lessons every week and you'll be um, given a notification every time I release one. And also make sure you click like if you did like this. The like button is below this video. Take it easy. I'll see you soon. Get in the shed.
Thank you.